Afternoon, folks. We've got a recurring bout of foolishness sweeping the internet, and it is once again all about HARP, the most overrated conspiracy on Earth. People are saying it caused the auroral display on May 11th, even though it was operating at a fraction of full power from the 8th to the 10th, and its effects disappeared within about 20 or 30 minutes. I have seen them blast that thing at full power, and literally nothing happens. It's operating regularly all the time, has been all year. When it's on, you can see it on radar, ionosons, Rio meters, the F2 critical frequency, the total electron content, and more. And it's never anything stronger than the natural variations that occur diurnally, day to night. Nothing special happens. A simple physics analysis of the power usage makes it clear that for ionospheric plasma, it can have some effects, but they are localized, they do not spread, and they disappear very quickly. When it comes to something like the aurora, no, not even close. The most I've seen is a fractional stalling of the high pressure cell's eastward movement. That's at full power. When it comes to the aurora we had on May 11th, I already knew the answer, but I checked the data anyway. All minuscule effects from May 8th to May 10th were gone before the CME struck. It was tiny, and the amount of power that came into the system from the sun during that event was more than what humanity uses in a whole month. Please do not fall for any of this nonsense about heart being involved in the auroral display. Furthermore, and I want you to really listen here and think. HARP started out pretty secretive, sure, but then in the span of about 90 days, after many failed experiments, we got several books released by different authors, two TV shows talking about it, actor, politician Jesse Ventura, no trust issues with those professions, handing you an enemy on a silver platter and telling you to scream about it on the internet. We also had the so-called whistleblowers giving talks about HARP all over the country, allegedly risking their lives and yet nothing happened to any of them. For those who are not familiar with this topic, this is called a limited hangout. It's a form of PSYOP, a psychological operation. It was done because the HARP system itself was largely a failure to do anything significant. So, they used it as a scapegoat to distract you, turn your head the other way, and to scare you and seem all-powerful. Please do not fall for this. It's level 101 red pill stuff here. There are two kinds of people promoting fear on this, government agents and those who fell for the enemy they were handed on a silver platter by the government. This is not that different from the climate stuff, COVID, the attack on freedom, or the promotion of satanic elements everywhere in the world these days. We are under attack as a people, and this is part of it. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone. Can so, HARP-like technologies be used for weather modification or even for more nefarious things like earthquakes or volcanoes and things like that? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, with the right amount of power, no today. Um, if you actually read Bernard Eastland's uh, work and Interesting you mentioned that film because I actually was working with the director of the film, um, Paula Randall Smith, on a sequel to that film. Um, and I did an interview with Nick Begich. And the film obviously never got made. Um, <laughs> COVID hit and, um, you it's know, funding. <laughs> yeah, funding hasn't come through. I haven't heard from her in quite a while. But regardless, she was, you know, still on that same kind of tip um, that, you know, Harp was controlling worldwide weather and all of that sort of stuff. Now, it's the same it's the same concept that I was talking about earlier. You have to consider what, you know, it's called power density. So Harp has three point six million watts going into it. When you figure in watts plus what's called dB gain or the efficiency of the antenna, you come to what's called an effective radiated power. So though HARP has 3.6 million watts generated by diesel engines, which they named Angels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, after the movie, angels don't play this harp. Right. Even the people at HARP have a sense of humor. <laughs> I know this because I have... Um, Dr. Chris Fallen, who was the director of HARP, I did a PowerPoint presentation on HARP 
And I wanted, you know, I was like, let me go to somebody who could fact check me. So I sent it to Chris. I said, Chris, you know, you're the director of Harp. Tell me how close to true, you know, what I got here is. He said, it's 100% accurate. I agree with everything you said. This is better than most of my students, you know, could ever put together all except that last slide. Um, I agree with everything you said. And of course, the last slide was about Fukushima and the heating of the ionosphere over Fukushima before the, the meltdown. Um, so he agreed with everything but that part. Um, and I'm fine with that. You know, I, I totally understand why he would not agree with that part. But the, the reality of the situation is that um, the effective radiated power of HARP is 5.1 billion watts so even though you put 3.6 million watts in because of the gain because of the efficiency of the antennas you get to a magic number of 5.1 billion watts or gigawatts um now if you go back to bernard eastland's original documentation when he was talking about um what he called cosip oh no cossack um cosmics uh, it's been a minute uh, i could i could pull up the term but anyway his original patents called for a a an antenna array approximately a hundred times larger than heart mm -hmm. in order to control the weather because the magic number that he came up with was 100 billion watts Oh, I see. OK, because you have to you have to consider how much energy is coming in from the sun. You have to overcome what's already coming in from the sun. And you have to have a, a, a certain power density focused on a certain area over a long enough period to be able to interrupt the, the jet stream. So 100 gigawatts or gigawatts um, is what, you know, the, the consensus is the magic number. So currently, no ionospheric heater on the planet can do that. 